On this episode, I am finally reviewing the screen. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT, the episode finally where I review this screen. Um, the good people at IT Studios sent this to me uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, asking me to review it and so I told them I would post an official review of the screen and I think it's a uh, good to get out to you guys as well uh, to see you know if this is a good option for one of the projects that you might be working on and so this is the IT Nexteon display this is the 3.5 inch enhanced version from IT Studios and the difference between the enhanced versus the normal version is that there are some extra goodies on the back of the board here. There's a real-time clock, uh, there's GPIO access, and I wanna say that that's it. That's the real main difference. Oh, there's also EEPROM on board that you can have access to from the, um, I don't wanna call them sketches, but from the programs that will run on the screen here. And so let's give you the, the good and the bad on this. We'll start as always with the good. So as a touch screen, the touch is very good on this thing. It's, it's very responsive. Um, you don't have to tap a ton to, to have it register. It feels like the touch is very good. I've, I've used it for a total of about probably three or four hours now, and I'd say the, the touch is, is very good. Um, the screen itself looks very good. The colors are very good. Uh, the display, as, as far as a screen goes, I think it is a, a very good, alternative or option for you to use in a project. Uh, it's got a lot of features. This thing can do a lot of things uh, display-wise. Now, it, it follows a little bit of a different programming model. You might be used to having to pixel push or draw things on a screen in your project. And for this display, it works a little differently. You build up a UI in their Nexteon editor software, and then you communicate with that UI from your platform, like your Arduino or your Photon or your Raspberry Pi or whatever it may be. Um, you're sending commands to a UI that you've already created ahead of time. So it's a little bit of a different paradigm there uh, that takes some getting used to, but the features there are, it's very feature rich. You can do a lot of things, gauges and text box and buttons on the screen and sliders and progress bars. And so it's got a good feature set. The vertical viewing angle, so if you're looking at it, you know, top to bottom, is very good. The colors will change a little bit as you, as you like look up and look down at it, uh, but as far as being able to see what's on the display, it's very good. Um, another one of the pros I like on this is the power consumption. I have not been able to measure it, um, just haven't had time, but uh, according to the data sheet, at full brightness, you're looking at under 150 milliamps on the current draw, which means you're not gonna stick this out in a field application for days, weeks, months on battery power, but on a, uh, a, a good USB battery pack, you could get several hours out of this, possibly up to an entire day. So for some sort of field application where you take it out and use it, uh, battery power is an option there. And so uh, the, the current consumption is very good, especially considering it's, you know, it's a full display with touch. Um, pretty impressed with the power consumption. It's got an SD card slot on it, which is not available for you to store data on, but is another way for you to put, like I said, you create this GUI uh, in their editor. The SD slot is there so you can put your, your compiled UI on an SD card, and that's one of the options to load onto that. I think that's a nice little feature. The other way to do this is through a USB to TTL serial adapter. Uh, and you can write from inside the UI editor, you can load your compiled uh, UI onto the board. But I like having the SD option, that's what I used uh, because they didn't send me a USB to TTL serial adapter and I didn't have one, but I have tons of SD cards lying around. Uh, it's, a, it's a micro SD slot. <clears throat> and the last thing that I really like about this, uh, because the UI has already been generated and compiled and you only need to communicate with it, send it messages, get touch message, messages back, it has a very simple serial interface, which I think is a big plus. So just with two lines, TX and RX, transmit and receive, you can do some pretty complicated displays on uh, this screen. And so I really, really like that. And 
While I've been talking, my notes that I had sticky noted to the front of my GoPro fell off, so I'm gonna pick them up, I'm gonna stick them back up here. We're real professional around here. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the negatives of this display. I said that the horizontal top to bottom viewing angle was very good. The left to right viewing angle is not great, as is the case with most uh, screens of this nature. Uh, but you're only gonna get about 30 degrees off center in each direction. So probably about a 60 degree uh, viewing angle from side to side. So that, you know, I don't have anything to compare this with. I don't have a ton of these screens that I've ever played with. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something to be aware of if you're gonna use the screen in your project. The GUI editor that you have to use to create UIs for this is, it's called the Nexteon Editor, is not cross-platform. That's another con. Um, it is written in uh, to utilize the .NET framework, and so it's really Windows-based. I was able to get it to run just fine in a Windows 10 um, virtual machine on Parallels on my MacBook with no problem. That worked just fine, so that, that was fine. I did not test it in a Linux environment using something like Wine or, uh, I don't know if you could use Mono for that, but anyway, I, I know there's ways to run .NET stuff in Linux, did not test that, but it uh, would be nice if the editor were cross-platform, so I'm gonna dock some points for that. Um, the biggest drawback to this screen, and my biggest problem with it, is the documentation. The documentation is not good for the uh, the UI editor or for the screen. There's a data sheet and there's some tutorials, but you really have to work for it. You really need to be determined. And I feel like a lot of people, especially on the beginner side of the spectrum, would get maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes into this and decide to put it back down, put it back in the box, put it on the shelf and never touch it again. It, it really takes some determination to find the right pieces of information, whether it's in the data sheet or from this wiki over here or from their site or from some random stack overflow question uh, to find what you're looking for. So I found that after a several hours, I was able to get the hang of it, the, the editor and the screen. And I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp. And I feel like at this point, I could create some pretty fancy UIs for this display that could be run from an Arduino, which is fantastic. You don't need a lot of horsepower on the platform end to interact with the screen. But getting there was a struggle. And so, uh, like I said, if, for, for beginners, not something that I would recommend. Um, but if, if you need a an inexpensive, so that, I'm gonna add that to the pro list, I, I didn't mention. This is not very expensive. I think this version, uh, and I, I'll correct it if I'm wrong, but I think it was about $35 for a full touchscreen display uh, is pretty good. And so if you're, you know, bent on using this in your project, you can figure it out. It just takes some uh, some effort. And so uh, the docs were not very good. It was hard to find information, but it, you did get the hang of it. And I feel like um, you'll get there if you're, if you're really um, determined. So uh, they could definitely, definitely improve that. So that's it. That is my review of the Nexteon display. Uh, overall, I would say if you need a touch screen for a project, uh, it's a good option. Um, <clears throat> again, I don't have a whole list of them that I could compare it to. I, I've not used a lot of these, uh, but I found it usable. And, and you know, I would if, if I needed a touch screen for something that was like sitting on my counter in the kitchen or something, I, I definitely would give this a look. So uh, that's my review. That also leads us somewhat into the word of the day. I've got it over here on my computer, which is grok. Now, if you haven't heard this word before, you'll hear it a lot in programming. Uh, you need to grok that, or he doesn't grok that, or I really grok that concept. It just means if you look it up on um, online, you're going to get a definition like understand intuitively. And I mean, I guess that's pretty good. What I've really known it to mean is that you really understand something. If you grok something, you know it front to back, you can answer questions on it. If somebody uh, is a beginner, you can help them because you, you have a, a deep knowledge of it. And so that's our word of the day. And I wanna segue that into a, a thought about the massive amount of opportunities that exist in Internet of Things. And I talked about this a couple of episodes ago and I'm gonna keep talking about this because 
it's really amazing. It, it's so amazing, the opportunities that exist. And so for this, I was thinking, you know, in 20 or 30 hours, you could be the foremost expert on Nextion displays. And, you know, because the documentation is not where it needs to be, somebody, the, the opportunity is there for somebody to step in and be the person that documents. You could set up a website that's like Nextion displays.io or something. And, start making YouTube videos about how to do certain things in the editor, how to hook things up, how to use the GPIO capabilities of the enhanced models. And just, you could build an entire site and YouTube channel and blog around these Nexteon displays and start to gather attention from, you know, contract work for people who need a display for a prototype. You could be a person that could come in and save them a massive amount of time and money. And so, it's just an example of the opportunities that exist because it's such a huge field and there's just lots of things going on. And so um, there's money to be made for people who grok certain concepts. And I think this is one of them. If somebody wanted to take the opportunity to, to be an expert in this area, I think you could, uh, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire, um, but I think you could do well. It'd be a great side thing. You gain a lot of knowledge. And I think you can actually make some real money uh, doing it. Uh, that's it for today's episode. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope every ha everybody has a fantastic weekend. If you have any questions about the display or other things, please reach out. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at Kevin Sidwar, or always you can email me, kevin at sidwar.com. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning all about the Internet of Things one day at a time.